everything that I can praise the mighty name of the Lord. The Lord of Lords, the unfailing God, the God of our breakthrough. Let us praise the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We pray, God, God that tonight that you move by the power of your spirit like never before. Send on your fire, Lord. Send on your fire as your servant would minister your word. You sing, Lord, as your vessel, I pray in the name of Jesus. I ask God that you would use him as your channel, as your mouthpiece master. In the name of Jesus, send out your fire tonight, Lord. As you minister, every one of us by my presence tonight. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seats, beloved. Once again, a very warm welcome to every one of you that are here tonight. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. In a place where the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. He'll communicate His plan to you. Amen. Amen. His plan for you, to you. His purpose for you, to you, in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. David says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad that you are here tonight. Amen. We are honored to have with us the servant and the handmaiden of God. Amen. That has been a blessing to us. Amen. 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 To this ministry, to our home. Hallelujah. Last week, Wednesday, we had a blessed meeting. Amen. Amen. As the Lord used them both for his glory and purpose. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And I'm going to call uh, Carrie Ann to come and uh, do the honors tonight. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I don't know if she's going to sing. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Amen. Carrie Ann is a local lady. Says, Ni a Bora Macy. Amen. Mar says, Falcoma Twitter. Okay. Says on the cup. Amen. Praise the Lord. And um, the prophet of God, Prophet Micah Mitchell, oh, yeah. was so fortunate to pick a woman from Cape Town. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. And an anointed woman of God. Amen. So divine connection. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. The prophet ails from the USA, New Orleans. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Lord has been using this young man oh, yeah. from his Infancy, if yes. I use that word. Amen. 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 But more from, from the man of God himself. Let us hand over to the woman of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. Amen. Good evening, church. Good evening. Um, we would just like to say a big, big, heartfelt thank you to Pastors John and Hazel and Pastors <coughs> Shannon and Candace for allowing us to stay in their home and inviting us to their church, their other home. Thank you very, very much. We are so blessed. We are blessed to be here tonight. I just want to share something real quick before my husband comes up and does his thing. <laughs> um, about at the, at the beginning of Feb, we, God told us to do a 20-day a challenge of praying in the Holy Spirit for an hour every single day for 20 Amen. days straight. Amen. Now that sounds easy and it sounded easy when God told us, but to actually put a whole hour aside a day ended up being challenging. Amen. Some days we went up to three or four hours, but other days 20 minutes was hard to put that time aside. Amen. But I can tell you what breakthrough upon breakthrough happened Amen. in those 20 days. Amen. The other thing that happened was the enemy caught hold of this and he decided to try to stop us. Mm -hmm. So on the first night we prayed for, I think it was three hours straight in the Holy Spirit. No speaking English, no singing, just praying in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That night I had an allergic reaction to medication mm -hmm. where I, could, I went paralyzed and I couldn't breathe. My whole throat closed up. Mm -hmm. 
and that's never happened before. So I got rushed to the emergency room and they didn't want to help me. So I got rushed to a second emergency room, but this time I had to hold my head up because I couldn't breathe. And all I could focus on was the Holy Spirit. And I said, Lord, you have me here for a purpose. It's not my time. And secondly, the 20 days have just started. I've got another 19 to go. So by the grace of God, I made it. And he brought me through that. But the enemy tries to come against you. But that does not mean that you're weak. And it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you or that you have some kind of sin in your life. It's because he sees your potential Mm -hmm. and he sees the potential inside of you for who you're going to be in the future. It's not about your past, it's about your future. He's trying to stop you from doing this assignment that God has for you. And in those times when it feels like we're falling, when it feels like we've tripped over the stone (coughs) and we're just like, God, I can't do this. That's when we stand on scripture. That's when we stand on the word of God, the breath of God. Like, for example, Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. We decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. In Psalm 91, just verse 10 to 13, it says, it says, um, Sorry, angels concerning you to hold you up and not let your foot, to not let you fall against a stone. He sends his angels, which are ministers of fire and wind, to catch you when you fall. The Holy Spirit living inside of you prevents you from hitting the ground. So when I felt like that, in my heart, I was praying Psalm 91. In December, my husband, we were at a... A conference to preach and he was walking and he didn't trip over anything the next minute we saw him falling I don't know what happened but we just saw him go down but as he went about this far he came back up again and there was an 85 year old lady there and she said I saw lights Amen. lights flashing in front of you and lifting you up again. Amen. and I believe those were the angels of God Amen. protecting us Amen. 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 So without further ado, I introduce my husband, Mike Mitchell. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the angels. Amen. Praise God for his protection. Amen. Family, how are you doing tonight? Amen. It's so good to be back here again. Amen. And it's a privilege and an honor. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are actually history tonight. I am live streaming for the first time around the world. Around the world, this place is going globally through that little device right there. So can you tell my family around the world, tell them. (laughs) Praise God. I'm excited about what God's going to do tonight. God specifically spoke to me during the day and he said his glory is going to show up in the place. Yeah. Amen. And he 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 specifically taught told me to teach out of First Kings chapter eight. Yeah. And we're going to start at verse nine and then we'll get going. I told my wife Wednesday of last week during lunch, I said, Babe, I feel like we're going to Durban next week. Amen. Now I have a very tight schedule, not ministry wise, but the South African government would like me out of here on March 23rd. Apparently they have laws called visas that require me to stay a certain time and leave a certain time. And so I have exactly three and a half weeks to go to Cape Town, file paperwork, get the paperwork approved, and then leave the United States. So when God told me, Wednesday, that I was coming to Durban, I thought he was crazy. Let's <laughs> be honest. I thought he was crazy. And then when my wife got her 10-year visa for the States, the spelling on the visa was wrong, which forced us, 
we had no option but to come back to Durban. Amen. Amen. And when we got this, we were in the middle of a hectic schedule at a conference that I was emceeing. And so I had responsibilities, but I had to, I, I couldn't let that bother me. And so literally we seen the visa, we found out we had to go back to Durban, and I just said, well, God, if that's your will, make it happen. Amen. I was excited because I would get to go see my Durban family. So I sent Pastor Shannon a message and I said, I'm coming to Durban. And I think it was then an hour they were gracious enough to open their home and, and just welcome us back. And remember when I said here last week, I said, it's your time. Yes. yes. Amen. It's your time. Yes. Now, when it's your time, God brings you into a season. Yes. And I, I, I like the word, it's your time, but God's teaching me seasons because he doesn't operate in time. He's a God that is timeless. Yes. So yes. he's a God that works in seasons. So I better just yes. say, it's your season. Yes. And when it's your season, divine connections happen Amen. like never before. Amen. But if you caught the video earlier today that I put on Facebook, yeah. when it's your season, it is time to start praying that yeah. people are attached to that season, Amen. recognize it, Amen. and comes to you. Amen. Someone tap your neighbor and say that the season is mine, season. and my help is coming. So what I did was, is for the last two months, knowing that I was about to step into a Cairo season, a yeah. God divine season, that what I went ahead and did was for the last two months begin to pray that God would connect the people to the sound of my voice. Amen. Each one of you have a sound that the Holy Spirit gave you. Each one of you have a sound to bring Jesus into the earth. Amen. And so what you need is to pray that the people recognize the sound and that they run with your vision. Amen. Because we are all called to some form or fashion to pastor a vision. You are in this house because of the apostolic vision of this house. Yes. And so you run with the vision of this house. Yes. But as a person that is over their home, you should have a vision. You should have a destiny. You should have a future connected to that home. And so your prayer should be, Father, send the people connected to the sound of that home. Amen. What do I mean? All right. We need a mortgage to live sometimes. Or we need a landlord to rent a home from. So, Father, I pray that the right landlord or the right lending company comes. What am I doing? I'm praying that they recognize the sound of the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. And because they recognize that I have unlimited favor, tap your neighbor and say, I walk with unlimited favor. Now, family, that's what we call land yap in the States, in New Orleans. That means something a little bit extra. Little extra, it's free. When, when in my rest, in, in my family restaurant back in the states, when we give you a little piece of fish, a little extra piece of fish or piece of bread, we call it lanya because it was a little extra. You didn't pay for it, but we love you, so we give you a little extra. And you'll find when you come to New Orleans that you get a little extra of everything, so we love everybody. All right. Praise God. Starting in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 9. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone, which Moses put there at Harab. Harab means desert. Remember that. It means desert or desolate. Where the Lord made a covenant with his sons of Israel. Israel means prevailing people. No matter what happened to the people of Israel, they always prevailed. Amen. When they came out of the land of Egypt, it happened when the priests came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord. So the priests could not stand to minister 
because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Mm. Amen. Oh, I want to read that again. So that the priest could not stand to minister yeah. because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. Hallelujah. I thank you for this time. I thank you for this season that you're stepping into in this house. I thank you, Father God, for breakthrough. I thank you, Father God, for unlimited favor. I thank you, Father God, for expansion. I thank you, Father God. For even new location, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that everything works according to your will and your purpose, but for your glory, Father God. Father God, I thank you, Father God. I just want to prophesy that real fast. I see in the spirit right now, I see in the realms of the spirit, I see a building and I see expansion. I see a, at least a thousand seat auditorium and I see it on a property of land that can be expansion. And the first building will be the building of the sanctuary, says the Lord, but it will eventually turn into the youth building. Because I am ordaining, says the Lord, a, a property and a land that will hold at least five to 10,000 people, says the Lord. There will be community properties. There will be community projects. There will be housing for people that need housing. And it will be a worldwide mission base, says the Lord. For they will say, how did that land produce it, says the Lord. But it will be by my might and by my strength because I have called this house to be a marvel in the earth, says the Lord. Father God, I thank you. Hide Hallelujah. me and you, Holy Spirit. You, Hide me and you. And let your glory be revealed in this place. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It says there was nothing at this point. I, I want, there was, we know according to Hebrews chapter 9 that there was three things in the Ark of the Covenant. There was the testimony. Yeah. There was the golden jar with manna, mm -hmm. and then there was the rod that bloomed. Yes. But at this point, what was in the Ark of the Covenant was the Ten Commandments, or the testimony of God. Yes. There was nothing, that was their rules that they lived by, so therefore, it was the law. It was the Word of God. Amen. That's all they had. Now, testimony, I'm going really quickly because I know what God's about to do. Amen. And so I'm laying a foundation and then God is going to explode. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to expect the glory of God Amen. to begin to fill this place. Amen. The glory of God is a weightiness. Amen. The glory of God is literally the splendor, the awestruck wonder of God. I have been in services where I have not been able to stand because of the very glory of God, where we have laid prostrate on Amen. the floor for hours. Amen. But it's, it, the glory of God will only come by your expectation. Amen. Yes. So I want you to begin to expectate yes. and begin to crave. As I'm speaking, you should be saying, God, give me more of your glory. God, show yourself in this place. Begin, if you can pray in the Holy Spirit, begin to pray in the Holy Spirit to yourself and allow the expectation and the glory of God to begin to fill the place. It said that the only thing that was in the ark, now the ark is symbolic of who we are. The ark is symbolic of who we are as a person. We are now uh, in, as, in of the ark of the covenant. We are now the temple of the Holy Spirit on the presence of God. Amen. Okay, we we I can go into detail how how because we show compassion and mercy that literally when people come to us it is like they're offering up prayers to the mercy seat because the mercy seat was where God rested that's why the anointing that's why the glory can rest upon you is because you you are the embodiment of the mercy of God and the compassion of God because you love God so much but what was inside of the ark at this time was the testimony are the word of God. Now, that word in the Hebrew means to break out. Amen. 
When you begin to speak or begin to worship out of the revelation or the manna that God has given you, you begin to tap into a whole new dimension of the presence of God and the glory of God. Amen. What do I mean? It is nice to say, oh Jesus, your presence is heaven to me. But in First Chronicles chapter 5, it says, your loving kindness endures forever. Your mercies is everlasting. And what happens is, is that it even says that they came in unity, the presence of God, the glory of God, the Shekinah glory of God filled the room as they were in unity. So they began to worship out of a revelation of who God was. So what is your revelation of God? What is your intimacy of God? For some people, it's salvation. Father, I just thank you for the revelation of the redemption power of your blood. Because if you go into worship, you have to realize that, hey, I am not worthy, but I'm redeemed. I'm purchased by the blood of God. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 says that Jesus, the great high priest, the high priest, tore through the veil so that we can step into the holies of holy. Amen. And so as we realize that, we just begin to worship out of that. And so that's why in history there were songs like, Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Because what they realize is that even in the Old Testament, there needed to be concentration. And so before the glory of God or the very presence of God rested on the on Mount Sinai and it was like it was say it was like so heavy that nobody could even touch the mountain that God had descended upon because before that could happen Moses had to go down to the people and concentrate the people. Yeah. Now for us, thank God, Pastor, I don't have to spend a week and I don't have to sprinkle blood and water all over my body. All I have to say is, Father, Amen. forgive me. Amen. 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 Because, see, I learned something with my dad being a police officer. Blood talks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Blood talks. Yeah, yes. You can take a speck of blood and get DNA and connect yeah. somebody to a murder. Yeah. And so as blood talks, that blood, Jesus' blood is all over you. Amen. You were washed in the blood. So Amen. therefore, God does not see your sin. He doesn't even see what you are made of. All he sees is the blood. Amen. And that blood says that you're my son. Amen. You're my daughter. But Amen. more importantly, you're my bridegroom. Amen. And as if there's anything, if there's anything that I have learned with being married in the last two months, is that my wife doesn't have to ask for anything. Mm -hmm. As the bride, everything is given to her. Amen. She does not lack. Mm. She does not. Amen. And so there's a place that we're that we love to call sonship but i'm now striving for a place called brideship mm. where i just think about my father taking care of me and i'm so yeah. in love with my oh, father yeah. so in love with my groom yeah. that everything is provided for me yeah. it's a new level of intimacy mm. that you have to catch yes. Yes. and see in numbers chapter 9 I'm not exactly sure of the verse, but it says in Numbers chapter 9 that the people of Israel, every time the glory cloud descended, they stayed. Yes. They stayed. They did not move. In fact, it specifically says at the end of chapter 9 that even if it took a month, a year, whatever amount of time, they did not go. So in the morning, the glory cloud would be in the tabernacle. Yeah. But at night, it would lift it. So what they would do is they would go out. Yeah. 
And they would go and conquer the land. They would go and do what God told them to do. And so my question is, is what season are you in? Is it time to sit there and just worship and just wait in the glory of God because glory also means abundance. It also means riches. So as you stay and you permeate and you rest in that glory of God, it begins, you, you just see the manifestation of how God does signs, wonders, and miracles. The very fact that the glory of God shows up is because it says in Exodus 25 or 23, that it would be a sign to my people. Amen. You're praying for signs, wonders, and miracles. When the glory shows up, he's already performed the sign. Amen. So my question is, can you carry the glory wherever you go and be a sign to the people? Amen. Tap your neighbor and say, I'm going to be a sign. I'm going to be a sign. Oh, your neighbor on the other side didn't see it. Tap them on the back of their head and say, I'm going to be a sign. <laughs> I live in the very glory of God. Amen. Today, while we were leaving um, Gateway Shopping Center, and we were heading back to where we were staying in Glenwood, the glory of God descended and it came in the room. Now, I had been in the car. Now, throughout that whole time, even, even when we went to the consulate today and we drove to Glenwood, I had been praising God. Amen. I had been singing. I, I, I literally made people mad because I was singing about God. Yes. They would look at me and they would run away. Yes. Right? And so what happens is, is that God fell into the car and the glory of God was very heavy in the car. Now this is when God began to talk to me about tonight Amen. and how his glory was going to come into the room. Amen. And now what happened was is that it got really still in there. The guy actually ended up having to turn off his car, his radio because the presence of God had filled the room of the car. It was a sign because as glory carriers, as literally the ark of the glory of God, we carry that. Wherever we go, we have the power to release it. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have the power to command it to come into the room. Wherever I go, I begin to breathe the atmosphere of heaven. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit is breath. It's the pure breath of God. Hallelujah. So I have the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. Amen. So as I'm breathing, I literally, there's times where I'm overtaking with this thought that I'm breathing heaven on earth. Amen. One of my greatest mentors that I've never met because he's dead, but he's a mentor. Just leave me alone, okay? I, I've read all, all of his books. He said this, it was Reese Howe, and if you know the history of South Africa, there would not be a John G. Lake without Reese Howe. There would not be the AFM, there would not be anything like that. John, Reese Howe literally gave up his son and him and his wife, he did not raise his son. Micah Howe, he did not raise him. He came to South Africa and for three years turned villages upside down for God. Amen. Prayed and interceded. And one of the biggest things he ever said, this has stuck with me since I was a small kid, eight years old. I remember my mom preaching this. I mean, saying this to me. She said, son, you have to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If a demon can possess you, how more powerful can the Holy Spirit possess you? Amen. And so I pray, possess me with heaven's reality. Yes. Possess me with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That I might demonstrate the Father's heart. Yes. And so think about this. All they had was the word. Yes. 
what is the word that God has given you? What scripture? And then how can you worship out of that? How can you build on that relationship with God? See, God called them a prevailing people. Do you know how many times Israel, the people of Israel, just, can I just say this, screwed up? They just messed up all the time and they were still God's chosen yeah. people.